Hi. We're uh, we're doing movie stuff. We're gonna yeah. do our top ten movies of all time. Not like the greatest of all time, but our personal favorites of all time. Because like our our opinion of the greatest would be kind of different. I don't think. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, we're gonna all gonna get. It's our favorite top favorite movies. Top favorite movies of all time. Top ten top. Top www.top10.favoritemovies.com. Yeah. Dot, 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 dot hundred <laughs> years. Dot top ten. Dot hundred years forever. Yeah. Dot, All right, top sure. ten. All right, you done? No. <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, my number ten. X Men: Days of Future Past. Yes, I know this is a recent movie, but it's just that good. The story is that good. The action. All of it. It's amazing. Watch it. Uh, uh, my pretend is Terminator 2. This is one of the first movies that I saw that I kind of saw that, wow, this is a really good movie. If, you know, uh, when I started looking at him analytically. And this is like, uh, to me, I just love this movie. It's It's got Arnold back when Arnold was still cool, I guess. And uh, I don't know. It's like the sci-fi movie if for all the sci-fi nerds. Uh, it doesn't get much better than Terminator 2, so. Uh, John Connor and things like that. So, yeah. For number ten, I have another movie, but a uh, last second edition in there is the Simpsons movie, and the Simpsons movie really has everything that you kind of want from the Simpsons into a movie. And if you're a fan of the Simpsons, it, it's a great movie. But if you, it, like, well, I guess I, that's the deal with like pretty much any movie. But if you're not a fan of the Simpsons, it doesn't really have much for you, I guess. Wow. But for like a lifelong fan of The Simpsons, it's it's a great movie. It has you know it's just it has all the satire and everything that Simpsons would have. Uh, uh, me number nine, I I they're basically they're very similar, but I had the Endless Summer slash Endless Summer two. You know I don't think we're gonna be doing like two movies, but it's basically they follow around uh, Mike Hinson and Robert August in the first one. Basically, surfers going to different spots all over the world, like South Africa, France, uh, Australia, just different places surfing, and you know sometimes talking to the locals, going through Africa. It's just a, a fun surfer type movie. And then the second one is basically they go back and they, you know, revisit uh, Robert and Mike's sort of, you know, travels and stuff like that with Pat and uh, Wingnut, being as two surfers in the second movie, but. It's a, they're, I just like that. I don't surf, but they're pleasant movies to watch. My number nine, I have King Kong. Uh, and I'm not talking about the uh, Peter, Peter, Jackson. Peter Jackson or the 1998 remake. I'm talking about the original. What? The, yeah, the original what? King Kong is awesome. It just in the, It's just a cool movie. And when you think of, like, the, in a way that this is the first really first really big big monster movie up until that point that it just kind of makes it really cool it looks surprisingly good for being made in stop motion like i can't do st i've tried doing stop motion with film and it's hard like to for them to actually completely animate you know King, you know kong who's in a, probably a good majority of the movie probably about half the movie and to get it so that it, he it looks at least as fluid as you can get doing stop motion. That's just uh, cool to me and awesome. So, and I mean, even though it's dated as hell, it's just I mean, one of the most iconic scenes ever is I mean, King Kong on top of the Empire State Building swatting at planes. You know, that's just something that's been in the psyche of P film goers forever since it came out. And so I mean, this movie is just amazing. So, what year was it? Nineteen thirty-three. It's probably the oldest movie I have on this list. <laughs> probably the oldest movie on anyone's list. Probably. Yeah, older than any of my list. Um, but my number nine is, uh, I believe it's Disney's uh, The Black Cauldron. I loved this movie as a kid. I watched it so many times I burned out the tape. Um, burn out? Yes. <laughs> Basically, the tape just didn't work anymore. I ruined the cassette. Uh, it's one of my favorite, probably is my favorite Disney movie of all time. Uh, so that's why it's on my list. And my number eight is uh, Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Yes. Damn, I forgot about Monty Python. This, my dad, 
uh, showed me this movie when I was 13 and introduced me to the world of Monty Python. Which is a great world. Which is amazing. I will constantly quote this movie if given the opportunity. So, <laughs> yeah. It's my number eight. My number eight, I, uh, as Luke had it for number ten, I have X-Men Days Future Past. Um, and again, with the whole thing about this being a new movie, this movie is a culmination of, in a way, it's almost like the, the end of the saga of X-Men up until this point. Especially the, uh, the present day part. It's the, the end of that. It's, uh, the, uh, kind of a farewell to the main cast and it's opening new doors for the X-Men universe and it's, it's all in all it's a great movie it's excellently paced um the action's really good I mean the characters they everything works so predictably yet so great at the same time it's like nothing you know yeah nothing might uh, surprise you but I mean that's okay because I don't know it just works so perfectly I mean it's just a great movie so my number eight. My number eight is one of the, one of the newer ones I have on my list. It's not like new, new, but it's from like 2007, 2008. I, I Am Legend. Probably, in my opinion, I don't know, it's hard to say. You just can't say Will Smith's finest acting because he has a lot of fine acting. But uh, this movie, it really... it. I don't want to say it did it entirely differently, but the whole zombie sort of thing, it... It was a zombie movie with very, very good acting, and it's 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 like a story to it, and it's not just like focus on the zombies, but it's it's a it's definitely a very intense movie, and uh, yeah, it's one of my favorites because you know it's on my top ten list. Number seven, I have Dances with Wolves. Um, oh, yeah. I'm not the biggest fan of Kevin Costner. Uh, that's kind of an understatement, but I would kind of like to be honest. I would prefer like almost anyone else in this movie. I feel like they could have made it better, but Kevin Costner making this movie good and, and everything, a uh, very long movie. But if you have the time, sit down and definitely watch it. It'll change your opinion. It'll really start to make you think about the you know the entire perception of natives in the United States, like, moving west and everything, and just kind of the time period, especially at the beginning of the movie when Kevin Costner was in the Civil War, and he got shot or something in his leg, and, you know, it's just the sort of that time period, it really gets you in that, you know, mode of thinking like that. He would rather go out, ride on a horse, and die, get shot and die, rather than get his leg cut off because you had a bullet wound, you know, and at that time you had to get your leg cut off, but that's just kind of like, you know, a time piece of the movie, but uh, it's definitely a, it's a good thinker, you know, when you really start to, it, like I said, changes your perception on natives in this country. Uh, my number seven is The Original Alien. Um, this movie is one of the scariest movies I've ever seen. And I think it's just uh, a great um, movie showcasing what you can do with um, with special effects and I guess uh, a limited environment. Whereas there's kind of not that much, you know, you're on the ship for much of the movie. So you, I mean, it's a big ship, but you don't see too much of the ship, you're kind of in the same areas for a good bit of the movie, and, um, you know, it has Sigourney Weaver, and I think one of her earliest roles, and it's, it's phenomenal acting, and, and I mean, it has, uh, the Xenomorph, which, you know, is the alien, and it's easily probably the most iconic movie monster since Godzilla, and it's, uh, just terrifying, it's, it's kind of a weird analogy of how destructive people can be towards each other because of how the xenomorph is kind of born out of, you know, a person, you know, they, they, that's what it did, it bursts out of a person's chest, so it's like, you know, evil is within us, and it, it will come out, it's kind of a weird uh, allegory for that, and I think it's just the, an awesome, fun movie, it's, it's Jaws in space, basically, so, I mean, you can't go wrong there, so. Alright, for number seven, I have Boondock Saints, 
Uh, this is the first time I ever saw Norman Reedus in a movie. Uh, and honestly, it, this movie, while it never gained popularity with critics, uh, it's definitely a cult classic. Uh, great acting, great story. Uh, the concept was definitely something new at the time. Incredibly violent. There's lots of death. I think a cat dies at one point. So so much death, so dark. Much yeah. darkness. That's yeah, brutal. a cat gets accidentally shot. It's brutal. With a high, high caliber take, bullet. I don't know how you could take that. Um, spawned a sequel that did not do as well. Unfortunately, but apparently there is a third one in the works. Ah, yeah, um, Reese. Oh. I don't know if Norman Reese is in it. No, oh. probably. He better be. Um, take break. Take a break from shooting zombies. Maybe. Yeah, take a break from shooting zombies with a crossbow. Do uh, Boondock Saints. Go shoot gangsters with an Irish and use an Irish accent. <laughs> um, so yeah, number seven, number six. I have Hogan's Heroes. It's a World War Two movie. Um, Clint Eastwood is the lead role. Clint Eastwood kind of became one of my favorite actors uh, of all time, if not one of my favorite male actors anyway of all time. Well, the only actor is male. Because otherwise being an actor is... Yeah. Apparently now the term actor applies to both. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't know. <coughs> but anyway... Uh, the, the concept behind this movie is a Clint Eastwood's in a uh, tank or a platoon. They find out that there's the Germans have this giant cache of gold bars hidden in a bank in this town that they're that is nearby. So they need to take a bunch of tanks. They're gonna steal this gold and take it home and be rich. But the army can't find out about it. A lot of interesting characters, a lot of good support characters. Definitely a uh, classic movie that you should watch. For my number six, I have The Iron Giant. Uh, this was this came out, what, 10, 15 years ago? Yeah, I was again? in elementary school. Yeah, it was, it was a long, it was a long time, time ago. And it's it's a really good movie. It's about a, you know, a kid who... He friends a, a giant robot that you know fell came from outer space and um, it's apparently it, has a bunch of firepower. Yeah, it has a bunch of fire. It doesn't like good guns and it's it's a really good movie in the sense of how uh, of the nineteen sixties how every uh, um, just the state of the world how it's almost shoot first ask questions later uh, how the the Cold War was and it's you know how. Um, you know, we were basically, you know, government officials were willing to nuke a town of innocent civilians just to kill this thing. And it's kind of, you know, again, it's it shows off the allegory of this time. And it's just beautifully done for a, for a, uh, an animated movie. For it's, it's a really good movie. And, I mean, it's just, um, the voice acting is great and they, uh... It's just the way that they uh, show off the the uh, the giant being really uh, passive, being really nice, but then you know at the sign of death and of guns, you know he kind of flips out. I just think it's just a really neat movie to watch. So yeah, one of the cool parts about that movie it, too is it's you enjoy it when you're a kid, but then when you grow up and you start to like. You learn more about the Cold War, like in school and stuff. Like even at an age so much now, more sense. yeah. Like it, you and you still enjoy it and stuff. It has stuff for like kids, but at the same time, it's like when you get older, it's like oh, that yeah, makes sense and, and stuff like that. Um, number seven, no, number six. I have Kiki's Delivery Service. It's a Japanese movie from <laughs> like nineteen eighty nine. It's about a, I think a thirteen year old girl, uh, who. Who's a witch, and she leaves her parents uh, to go to the city to, I guess you know as uh, as they define witch in the movie, you have to be on your own to discover your powers, and 
um, you know, she starts, she uh, works for like a delivery place, delivery service, and it's basically, it's actually very well done about, you know, a young teenager, especially a young teenage girl growing up and really finding out life lessons on her own, and uh, it's just, it's just, it's a good movie for that, you know, uh, dealing with growing up, but uh, it's a good movie, very entertaining. Uh, number five, I don't think I need to say as much about this movie. Everyone has watched it. It's Forrest Gump. Uh, you just don't... <laughs> yeah. It's Forrest Gump. I, I, if you haven't watched Forrest Gump, you need to watch Forrest Gump. And if you don't think it's that great, I mean, I, there's nothing I can say to change your mind. You're just... You're lost. You know? <laughs> and you're never going to find fun. your way. Right, uh, it's a great movie. Number five is the original Halloween, directed by John Carpenter. This is... Uh, just a really cool movie where the sequels kind of uh, watered down what made this particular movie so great. Uh, but, you know, the fact that Michael Myers coming back and personifying evil. Like, he's, a, he's not a force of nature that he kind of became in a lot of the later movies. He's just a man who's really, really evil. And... In, and, you know, his victims appear to be random, which, you know, again, makes it seem much more evil, whereas, you know, they gave him a, a reason in uh, the later movies. And so I just think that uh, this movie's really good for kind of lack of special effects. I mean, this movie, there's no blood in this movie. And it's just really well written how sound works and how just... You never see his face or whatever for m much of the movie, and it kind of this movie defines the horror genre and everything it has tried to be. Ever since this is easily, I think, the single most significant horror movie ever made. So Halloween. Yeah, very excellent choice. I forgot about that movie. Um, my number five is The Great Escape. It's another World War Two movie. Uh, about a bunch of uh, soldiers from various branches of the military, uh, most of them Air Force and uh, Army, that have been put in this German prison camp and are formulating a plan to escape. Based off a true story, uh, this escape actually happened. The characters are all real. Uh, so it's a historical fiction, I guess. Uh, they do play events very close to how they actually occurred, but some liberties were taken with the characters, uh, as you can understand, as what happened in a movie. Um, but, very good watch. It's a long movie, it's about three hours, so, but again, a lot of memories of sitting down and watching this with my dad. So, yeah, a lot of feels, a lot of feels. Feels are for queers. Feels for queers. Yeah, well, you go fuck yourself. Because my number four is Casino Royale. <laughs> this reminds me of Lester off of the Cleveland show. No one probably ever watched a Cleveland show. It's nope. like off the air now. It wasn't that good, but. It was but. Just funny. Uh, yeah, my number four is Casino Royale. James Bond. Manly movie. Daniel Craig. Daniel Craig. What's the Making Bond a badass Bond again. Uh, dun, 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 this is dun, the. Dun, dun. I consider it a reboot to the Bond series. Daniel Craig's first time being James Bond, um, and probably, in my opinion, the second best James Bond behind Sean Connery. Yeah. <laughs> because Daniel Craig took it back to the Sean Connery style of Bond, which is rely less on your gadgets and kick more ass, and drive really nice cars and have sex with incredibly gorgeous women. Have sex. <laughs> um, fuck. Speak, speaking of Sean Connery, I didn't, because you just reminded me, and I have something else here, but I honestly, I'm, uh, it honestly fits right about where I would put it. I, League of Extraordinary Gentlemen yes. is a great, movie. great movie. No, you say it like Sean Connery. A League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. That's a terrible <laughs> Sean Connery. Uh, I'm not even going to go attempt it because mine is not good. Yeah, so um, it's basically... I don't even know how to describe it. It's I know it's based off of comics. It's 
some weird comic, like, uh, almost like the Avengers, except not, I don't know, I don't know how to describe it. Um, but there's, it's a collection of characters who are trying to stop, uh, there's a nuclear sub, if I'm not mistaken, in the movie. It's been a little while, but, but like... it's the Nautilus. Yeah, the, the Nautilus, and you, there's, uh, oh, uh, Captain, ne Captain Nemo. Captain Nemo, yeah. Captain Nemo, Jekyll and Hyde, uh... Dorian Gray. Dorian, yeah, Dorian Gray. Gray. Um, the Vampire Lady. Uh, Tom Sawyer. Ah, oh, Tom yeah. Sawyer. And then um, the, the Invisible Man. The, in yeah, the Invisible Man. Like, there's... It's basically almost like a who's who of, like, B, uh, either, like, movie, uh, peep, movie, uh, characters and, like, uh, comic book characters. But it's, I think it's just a great movie. It's one of those movies that gets yeah. overlooked a lot. It's actually based off of comic books. Yeah, it's based off of a lot of comic books. So, I mean, it's just like... No, there is a comic book series probably. Yeah, I know. I know. I knew that, that there's the comic books. Um, yeah. there's Dracula's in the comic books. I know that. There's... He's, he's a member, but huh. it's just, uh, it's a really fun movie. It's, I, I feel like it's almost a guy movie before, like, the modern way that you would think of guy movies, you know, yeah. how you think of The Expendables. This is, like, before that, when it was extra more nerdy and cheesy and not so masculine, but it's awesome, so, League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> my, my next, uh, movie... Uh, number four, I have Ratatouille. It's a Disney movie, uh, starring Patton Oswalt and some other guy. <laughs> uh, basically, I know Patton Oswalt. He's the, like, the voice guy that I remember. I... But it's just a lovely, lovely movie, honestly. It's, it's a Disney animated movie at Disney's finest hour. When Disney is great with animated movies, they are, like, perfect. They define animated movies, but this is one of like the great, the greatest animated movies of all time of Disney's entire collection. Um, it's a rat that knows how to cook, and it's a rat that you know defies his other rats. It's it's about breaking away from the herd and going and following your dreams, even if you're a rat. And uh, you know, it's about. The, the human character, the main human character, it's about, you know, having confidence in yourself. It's, it's a very, 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 very good movie. Um, I'm sure everyone has watched it. I can't say it'll go ahead and watch it. Um, third, I have Finding Nemo. I don't think I need to go too much into detail about that. It's about, you know, finding your own way, breaking out of your habits, but in terms of a fish being abducted, and his father, who is too, you know, protective, going after him and really discovering himself through that. And uh, Nemo, the little fish, really discovers that he, you know, his father just wanted what's best for him. And, you know, I love fish. And it's, it's a great, great movie. It's, it's the best Disney fish movie, Disney. I think, of all time. Really quick tidbit that I found out about that. You know, Nemo is, means lost in Latin. Yeah. Yes, yeah, that's, that's, that's what... Uh, that that's what his name means. So it's you know, Probably it makes it makes lost. sense. So uh, my number three, I have Philadelphia, which is uh, and Ellen DeGeneres is in it. That was great. Yeah. Uh, like I said, Philadelphia. It's a movie that stars uh, Tom Hanks and Denzel Washington. Uh, it's about Tom Hanks, who is a lawyer, who is fired from his job because uh, um, he's fired from his job and. And which he's trying to prove, he goes to court to try to prove that he was fired because he was gay, because his, uh, his bosses found out, and the, the higher-ups found out that he had AIDS. And so it was the first movie to really take AIDS and uh, homosexual people in a non-negative light. Up until that point, you know, uh, homosexuals were portrayed as weird, not right, even evil in a lot of cases in the movies, and so this was the first one to kind of take a normal stance, and it's just a, a great movie, um, casting Denzel Washington as his, uh, lawyer was a smart move, because, um, when he sees that, you know, Tom Hanks' character is getting, uh, discriminated against because people know he's gay because he has AIDS, you know, he kind of, him being African American, you know, he decides that he's going to step up with him, and he also overcomes, overcomes his own homophobia throughout the course of the movie. And it's just a really, really powerful movie. Uh, 
the, like uh, everything once you get to the courtroom scenes is really really good and it's like a lot of pushing social issues and it's just a very even though it's I think this movie came out in the 80s or the 90s it's just a, it's still a very relevant movie that still holds uh, true and very powerful to this day it's just a great movie in my opinion alright my number three is The Good, the Bad, and the Ugly. Uh, another classic uh, movie, Clint Eastwood movie. Probably one of his best westerns, in my opinion. Uh, inspired a lot of other spaghetti westerns that followed. That's what that style of movie is called. Spaghetti westerns. Spaghetti westerns. I don't know why they're called that, but anyway, it's beside the point. Uh, very good movie. It's, it's... If you want... A, a movie to call the classic western movie. That's it. You, you can arguably say this is it. Or true. I mean, there are, yeah, there are other contenders, obviously. You know, John Wayne had a lot of great uh, western movies. Other, there are other great Clint Eastwood western movies. But this is probably one of my favorite ones. Uh, my number two is Serenity, uh, directed by Joss Whedon, starring Nathan Fillion. Summer Glau, some other people, uh, Dual State, uh, Rennie Karen. yeah, probably not the name, everybody. Um, Serenity and it's the, the TV series that it spawned from Firefly were kind of meant to take a look at what would happen if Earth's resources were used up and humanity somehow managed to get ourselves out into the solar system, out into the stars terraform planets and some of the things that would happen from that uh, a whole lot of political you know under you know backhandedness underhandedness whatever you want to call it goes on uh, but I'm trying not to ramble on too much about yeah. this movie so that's my number two my number two is the original Planet of the Apes um, this movie is really really well written in the sense of um it has you know probably two of the most famous lines in movie history you know the uh, get your damn paws off me you damn dirty apes and uh you know you damn damn them they blew it all to hell at the end of the movie and it still has like one of the most shocking endings ever you know when i mean the movie's been out for god knows how long you know uh where at the end uh, he finds the Statue of Liberty blown up and it turns out that instead of being on an alien planet thousands of years in the future, he's on Earth thousands of years in the future. It's like, still like, you know, one of the most shocking endings ever. I mean, if you didn't, didn't, don't know it's coming, you know, that's gonna... Well, spoilers. Well, yeah, it's, it's, the movie's been out for 30 years. Yeah, if you haven't seen say. it yet. <laughs> if you haven't seen it yet... Yeah. I haven't seen it. <laughs> blew it. I can't watch it. <laughs> you blew it. <laughs> you blew it. But uh, it's a great movie just because it really shows, it talks about human nature, whereas, you know, the apes are people and the humans are these lowly kind of creatures, and it's like how almost like animals we are when it comes to dealing with our own kind and our treatment of the world and how humans can only destroy, and it's like, it's just a very uh, deep message that's kind of hidden through this a lot of satire in how the humans and the apes look and so it's uh that's my number two just a great movie my number two is a french movie so i might have a little bit of trouble pronouncing it it's like the sort of french ish version of the name emily emily uh, it's about it, it's really about sort of making an everyday sort of situation interesting by finding little things and really going with them, and uh, it's about this girl, uh, name of the title, I don't want to try to say it again, I probably will mess it up, um, it's about her being a, a, an introverted person, and not being that outgoing, but sort of, through the course of a few days, really sort of finding her way, and making the little things interesting, and just studying people, and that sort of thing. It's uh, just a nice, pleasant movie. It's not like, you know, action-y or, you know, 
it's kind of a bit of romance, but uh, that's that's the gist of it. Uh, I guess number ones now. My number one favorite movie of all time, um, The Green Lantern. Just kidding. <laughs> Somebody is terrible. Um, Juno is my favorite movie of all time. Ellen Page. I'm not the biggest Michael Sarah fan, uh, what? but uh, what's his name? Simmons. J.K. Simmons. J.K. Simmons. Yeah, because his name is like Just Kidding. That's how I always remember. <laughs> J.K. Simmons, among other people. Um, it's just a wonderful movie. I think just about everyone's watched this movie, but it it's written so interestingly with you know the lingo and the plot being something that's just entirely different, dealing with teenage pregnancy in sort of a humorous way, but still kind of a from a teenage standpoint, in a way, and it's just a very interesting, funny movie. My favorite movie of all time. My number one favorite movie of all time is. <laughs> what is it? Back to the Future, the original. Wow. Yeah. Uh, this movie's just. Uh, I think it's awesome. It's um, Michael J. Fox at his very, very best. He's even though he. Because of his condition, he he can't really act that well anymore. He's still one of my favorite actors ever. What's I think condition? he has Parkinson's, uh, so like he can't he, he his speech is affected and he can't stop moving. Uh, like he's always twitching and it's like, um, I just think that if this is just a a really great movie in the sense of you know time travel was something that was you know reserved for uh sci-fi nerds you know up until this point whereas it's this was like the, the first uh yeah which was this was like the first big movie to tackle that in the in in a sense and i think that uh christopher lloyd uh is another is a great character to have um I'm trying to think of some of the other actors Roy actually McFly. yeah uh michael j fox I'm trying to think of the other <laughs> characters but it's just a really cool story about, you know, time travel, and actually discussing the, uh, ramifications of if time travel was possible, like, what would happen, so I think it's just a, a good movie in that sense, that it's, it's very mature, yet it's a fun movie at the same time, you know, poking fun at how skateboarding got started, and dumb things like that, you know, how rock and roll started, you know, these little things, it's just, it's just a fun movie, I love this movie so much, so that's my number one. Alright, my number one is probably <laughs> not... <laughs> I added myself last time, so it's going to be normal this time. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, my number one is probably rather expected by some people. It is Star Wars Episode Four. Boo! Uh, uh, that movie sucks. <laughs> Honestly, this movie time. has just kind of <laughs> affected my entire life. Yeah, you can say that. Uh, I mean, I love this movie. I love the Star Wars movies. I love everything about the Star Wars universe. It's, you know, I, from the time I was five years old, these movies have been amazing, except for certain things in, let's say, the prequel trilogies. Jar Jar. Jar Jar, Jar, Jar is amazing. Jar Jar is fun. But other than that, <laughs> these, the prequel's all that matters. These are great, you know, it's a great trilogy, but A New Hope is really what started it all for me. So, that's why it's my uh, favorite movie of all time. Oh yeah, so this was all three of our top ten favorite movies of all time. Uh, you know, tell us what your top ten favorite movies are, you know. Yeah, do. If you want. Or don't, I don't care. I mean, yeah. don't. We should do like our top favorite TV shows of all time. Alright, we, we could do that. Well, we might do them like by genre, like our favorite ah. movies by genre, because that'll open up a little bit. Yeah. Like, I don't think we had any like comedy, comedy movies and stuff. Like yeah, yeah, I, I, comedies are cool, but I don't think comedy is a lot. It's really hard for a comedy to be a, yeah. b uh, in run for the greatest like, movie of all time. I was thinking Blazing Saddles, but I'm like, I'll save that for like sort of if we do like a comedy sort of thing. Alright, so, uh, yeah, I guess that's it, so. Oh, don't forget to blaze it. Always blaze it. LeBron James came back to Cleveland. <laughs>